coming in. Caffeine jitters. It's also noon, so that's good. Oh, baby, here we go. <laughs> what is that buzz? I lost my pen. I ran out of my notepad. So now I'm just using this, this little thing. This. Oh, back, boy. back in school mode over here. <laughs> back in school mode. All right, here we go. Risha and this baby. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you know, you got to take the notes. You know, you got to take the notes. O o always le learning. If you are tuning in live, say hello in the comments right below. Oh, baby. This is, a, this is actually the, the first one of the, the change that we're making to content is profit. I know. We're announcing just a second. With that said, are you good, Fonz? I'm good. I'm good. Welcome to Content is Profit, guys. Happy Monday. Today, we come to you lunchtime. I know. Lunchtime. So you, so yeah, that I, I think that's cool. More personal. More personal. You can share a time with it. us while you, you know, eat your lunch. Eat your lunch. <laughs> I know. The <laughs> truth is, there's a family event and uh, I was going to die if we continue to uh, do this uh, event in yeah, the afternoon. But so. we're actually making the conscious decision too yes. of transitioning shows from afternoon to, yeah, there's, to noon there's now. There's a post-production secret, secret sauce in there happening after the shows. So... Uh, we'll tell you more yeah. about it, but today we have an incredible guests, plural. An incredible. Two, two, two guests. <laughs> very incredible. Yeah, my yes. English is not very good looking today, but uh, I'm ready, Fonsi. You ready? I'm ready. I'm just going to say this. I noticed something really cool on the screen. Two, three things really cool. <laughs> First, things. what is this right here? This is so cool. Yeah. I'm if just you, if you, don't, don't, don't say what it is. Like if you, if you think you know what it is, just put it in the comment. Let us yeah, know. Just let us know. And then the other things that I noticed is, what are you wearing? That looks so cool. What are you wearing? That looks so cool, oh, too. Hey. Is it part of the new Beast Bros swag? Yes, yeah, let's go. Right. Uh, link in the DMs. Just send me a message. <laughs> link in the DMs, yeah. <laughs> just hit us up. We're, we're, we're thinking. We I think we got some some cool designs going on. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're trying to get to our, uh, one of our guest <laughs> levels today. He has, bro, he, have you seen his swag? It's, it's Gucci Gucci. It's, it's Gucci. Yeah. yeah. Gucci, he, Gucci. he got the soccer going on. All right. But let's you ready, do this. Fons? Yeah. Actually, let me, let me pull the intro in here. Let's do it. We've got some. Hey, I'm Luis. And this is Luis. <laughs> Welcome to the Content is Profit podcast. <laughs> In here, you're going to get the insights, accountability, and drive to create consistently and increase your revenue. Ooh, you'll hear from top entrepreneurs, creators, and anything and everything you need to know about content. All this while having a good time. The goal of this podcast is simple to entertain, educate, and turn your content into profit. Let's go. <laughs> that was good. I don't good know job. why it is so difficult for me to pronounce that word. Entertain. Entertain. Yeah, it, well, well, it's, it's a tough one. It's okay. I'm going to have to practice. We're going to brand it that way. And then that way, that's the right way to say it. Practice <laughs> makes improvements. Fancy, what are we talking about today? <laughs> today, guys, we're talking. It's going to be a, I feel like it's, it could be a potentially wide conversation here. But we're going to try to nail it down into succeeding with media, parent printers, and the HubSpot Creators Ooh, Program. Oh, that sounds Good. Hashtag juicy, juicy. Guys, if you're enjoying these episodes, don't forget to follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform. We are everywhere. And if you find a place where we're not in, just send me a DM and we'll publish there as well. <laughs> also, follow us on social media at Biz Bros Co. That is right, guys. And if today's guest help you move one step closer towards your goal, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave an honest review. Thank you. Let's go. It's Monday. And today we have our first ever guest from the hotspot creators program family and yes you heard that right guests plural two of them 2v2 time oh yeah today's guests are part of the hotspot podcast network with their show parents making profits in which they had the shark himself damon john as their first guest that was pretty Ooh, impressive impressive indeed they are also founders public speakers emmy award winners and of course parentpreneurs themselves Fonzie, I think you need to get yourself a kiss so you don't feel left out. <laughs> I'm pretty good. Thank you, guys. Please welcome co-host of the Parents Making Profits podcast, James and Mario. Yo, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Let's go. How are you guys doing today? Great, man. Fantastic. 
Oh man, but but I mean, I think we can this again. Like I mentioned in the intro, this conversation can go <laughs> anywhere. We can potentially <laughs> talk for hours. We already share with you guys if you guys wanted to do the 24-hour marathon. But you know, you guys are busy guys. So <laughs> for those that don't know who you guys are, why don't we start with individually, one by one, kind of like Spark Notes? Who are you, and then how do you guys connect it? Go ahead, Mario. Okay. All right, so <laughs> is there any spark notes? So, so my name is Mario Armstrong. Uh, I'm a content creator, entrepreneur, um, husband, and dad uh, to my son Christopher, our son Christopher, and um, we have our own independent production company called Never Settle Productions, and we have a separate company called Mario Armstrong Media. We have four employees, two con and two additional contractual uh, people in our company, and we do content that's basically around entrepreneurs and creators my whole ethos is called never settle the theme the branding is never settle productions never settle show and we really help entrepreneurs figure out their way to build their business grow their personal brand um, access to brand sponsorship dollars and revenue so that they can build their companies but it's all about focusing on entrepreneurs and content creators to helping them grow and we've won, won a couple of emmys for the work that we've done independently as well Amazing. Perfect spark notes. We're going to give you an A plus right there. Cool. <laughs> I mean, how, am I, how am I supposed to follow that? <laughs> Never go second. Yeah, right. <laughs> lesson learned. Lesson. So I'm James Oliver Jr. Uh, I'm co founder of the world's cutest twins, Zoe and Thaddeus. That is, uh, by the way, Mario, I need to add that to our intro and you pass it over to me. Co founder <laughs> of the world's cutest twins, Zoe and Thaddeus. I, um, I'm also a tech entrepreneur. Um, I'm founder and CEO of the Parentpreneur Foundation, where we empower black parentpreneurs so they can leave a legacy for their beautiful black children. And I'm in the process of launching a new tech startup, uh, it's called Kabila, which is a co-founder matching application, think Bumble for tech co-founders. And That's we have cool. a, great, a great community that we're building to help tech founders be better founders and better humans. Uh, also a published author, the book, The More You Hustle, The Luckier You Get. You can be a successful parentpreneur. And I'm actually about to start writing a new book. So there's that. Nice. So awesome. Looks like you guys are playing a busy, man. Like, this is amazing. I, I love it. <laughs> all, all I'm hearing is we need to step it up. <laughs> I know. It's like, yeah. what's happening? You're like, <laughs> we're lazy, Fonzie. We're lazy. Uh, no, but I'm, I'm super honored, obviously, to, to, to have you guys here. We connected, obviously, with the program. So I want to invite everybody, if they want to find out more about you, go to your show, right? Uh, Parapreneurs is amazing. Just like search it in any parents making profits. Parents making profits. This, this guy. I'm, this I'm, guy. I'm the one fact checking, <laughs> fact checking. I couldn't find it on my cheat sheet. Anyways, <laughs> but go find him in your favorite platform because um, I was hooked from episode one. Uh, there's there's a couple there, like the 11 minute call. That was amazing. And mm. uh, how to find the sponsor. That's amazing too. So go find him, learn a little bit more about it. But I think Fonzie has very specific questions for today's episode. Well, I'm, oh, I'm, nice. First of all, <laughs> like how did you guys meet? Because I, I you know, one of the first things I noticed, especially when we did that that call that we met each other, is like you guys seem to be very different in a way, right? James, right? Like more on the tech side. I feel like you are a little bit more on the operations, like founding this these companies. And then Mario, either although you do found your own company as well, you 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 look more like a the spokesperson, right? I mean, you, I've seen your videos. You're on stage, right? He's on a Today Show. He's a Today Show contributor. He's on like, the Today Show. Yeah. I mean, look at that, right? Being on the Today Show. So I'm curious, how did you two meet, right? I mean, they say kind of like opposites attract. So yeah. maybe there was some sort of, <laughs> yeah. of truth to that in the I business tell, world. I can tell that story. So this was back in 2013. I was living in Wisconsin um, from New York originally. And uh, I just completed a tech startup accelerator called Generator, went through their winter Madison cohort. And my startup was called We Montage, and it was the world's only website that lets you turn your digital images into removable photo wallpaper. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody emailed me and said, hey, NPR is doing this uh, day in the life of a black tech entrepreneur. Because, you know, we were like unicorns back then. There weren't a lot of us then. It's still, by comparison, not a lot of us now. So I saw the message. I, I pinged them right away to tell them my story to see if they would include me in the program. And then I saw Mario was curating the tweets. And I didn't know Mario at the time. And I was like, well, dang, let me, um, 
let me reach out to Mario because he was all over Twitter. Like, like Instagram is his jam now, but Twitter back then was his jam. <laughs> and I'm like, let me see if I could tweet at Mario and maybe like maybe he might notice me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe he might like what i'm doing at we montage and then you know, maybe he might put we montage in his day show and i reached out to him he got back he loved it he did get we montage in the today show a couple times he wrote the forward wow. to my book like he's a great friend he's a remarkable human i am thankful that god connected us and i'm, I'm happy to be working on this podcast with him you know i like to say that he is a Mario is a super nice guy. You maybe heard me saying this on the podcast. He is a really nice guy, and I'm just nice enough. So he is <laughs> he is the desired taste, right? And I am the acquired taste. So that's us, Batman and Robin. <laughs> Good cop, bad cop. I love it. That, now, uh, Mario, what's the right? What's the what's the true story? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything he said was false, except <laughs> no. Everything was right. Everything was spot on. I mean, that's exactly how it worked. Um, and you know, it's one of those things where you <clears throat> kindred spirits find each other. And um, it was because of the cold outreach, which James is really, really good at. Um, that's something that a lot of people can learn from is like how he reaches out to people coldly. Um, and we just clicked. And it was because we both had similar dreams and ambitions. We both um, yeah. shared a similar experience. And when you have those nuances that you kind of can blend with each other, you're finding your tribe, you're finding your people. As humans, you know, we like to congregate or connect to people that are at least similar to us in some way. Absolutely. doesn't mean that we should only be seeking out people that we're similar to, but it just means yeah. that naturally we like to connect with people. We're, we're a social species in that sense. And yeah. he reached out and I love what he was doing and it was killer. I mean, the fact that he had this... Um, product that was actually out that was re i mean i have it in my living room on the living room wall it's a removable wallpaper that is basically made up of the collages of images that you selected so you select all your images so that cool. you want That's you awesome. pick pick the size that you want for your space and you put this wallpaper up and i tell you right now every time someone comes into my house first thing they look at on the living room wall is like they just look at all these they're like damn yeah and i have no nails no frames no none of that nonsense going on and it was just clean. a beautiful clean pristine yeah. product that just yeah. was gorgeous so yeah That's so cool yeah the product was brilliant but you know it just never caught on like we raised just enough money to fail which is a whole <laughs> other conversation if you ever want to talk about that but you know mario i agree with what you're saying man like we're similar but we're still very different which is why i think i think the podcast doing the podcast with you is is great because we don't always agree no, we don't. In fact, you know? I'm curious as to how we're still friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Like, I found out just the other day, this guy doesn't like hip hop. And I'm like, why am I doing a podcast with yeah. you? Like, <laughs> what, what are we talking? You don't absolutely like hip hop? Un like absolutely uninspiring. Uh, I, and, I, I, and I'm a former DJ. I can't even understand oh. that. <laughs> oh, you're you're offended, offended for sure. Um, I don't even want to ask him. Does he watch the NBA playoffs? Like that's I what don't. I'm into right now. And he probably doesn't I watch don't. the NBA. Yeah, I, see? I stopped watching NBA basketball a long time ago. I was into college too because you know I went to oh, grad school at UNC, gosh. right? Oh, so man. I was big college basketball. <laughs> but yeah, I stopped watching NBA uh, hoops like early 2000s. We're gonna recruit you for the the soccer side of things, man. You know, maybe maybe we get a chance nah, in there. I don't I don't yeah. like that either. Sorry. Gee, that, I, I don't know what. Man, he came, he came here today to make enemies. He's like, I'm looking up on chicken violence, my friends. Sorry. My friend. And this is no. why the podcast works because when you have two differing opinions and coming from two different perspectives, if yeah. you can find that middle ground so that you don't, um, you know, <laughs> beat each other up, if you can find that middle ground, it ends up really, I think, creating a nice conversation because yes. there is that automatic like tension where we don't see everything yes. eye to eye. I mean, when we're even talking about guests, we're like, I don't know. Like, and then I got to try to convince him. He's got to try to convince me. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's never same church, same pew situation nope. going on. The creative yeah. tension is brilliant though. I mean, I, I told him, I feel like when we have that creative tension, we always end up with a much better product. I, mm. I, absolutely. Actually, uh, that was one of the most robust piece of feedback that we've received on the show. Cause you know, uh, we mentioned it. We had the producer review the show and they're like, you guys have to like create more tension in here. And we're like, well, we like everything. Like, it's so hard. <laughs> like, we actually agree with everything. Right. And, uh, and, uh, but we've been putting a little bit more of attention into that. And the, la the latest episodes, that's, that's really good. I'm, I'm very curious. Right? A lot of people ask us like, how do us as brothers, 
like work together or publish this together or yeah. do this thing, right? Um, what what like what was the conversation for you guys to start a podcast? Right, a lot of the people that listen to the show start are starting their own platforms, whether that's solo or they're trying to find like a co-host and they're working through the structure of that, the logistics of that, right? Like who's the right person? And you know, you guys just share a ton of amazing value in like how that relationship started, but like why the podcast? Like, is there a mission behind it? Like, is this like a passion project? Like, what is it? What's the intent behind the show? And and what do you recommend people like in that state? <laughs> Before you answer that, Mario. No, I want you to go first. No, no. Well, well, after we answer that question, I got a better question for you to ask Mario. Mario's in business. You, you guys are brothers on the podcast. Mario's in business with his wife. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Ask him about that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, 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 He's gonna ask me about that. Oh, yeah, exactly. oh, level. Stay away. yeah, stay away from that one. <laughs> no, that's remarkable. That they they, yeah. do, they operate at a high level together. Incredible. It's remarkable. So, um, but what was the question again? Like, how do we end up working together in the podcast? Is that the question? Well, yeah, do I mean, we have a platform? Do we have an agenda? Like, do we have a plan? Like, what? Why do this? And how did it kind of come about? I think. Mm. I think part of what we're looking for here is like, how can we help other people that may be in that same situation, Absolutely. thinking about launching a podcast and and coming together? I would say really quickly, the first thing is being true to you. Like, don't mm. try to create something that doesn't feel good and natural to you doesn't mean it can't be something you can work towards, but it has to be something you can be consistent with because the biggest thing about podcasting and it really content creation overall, uh, you can't get to content as profit or <laughs> if you're not doing it consistently. So that means yep. you better be really into it or you better have some kind of topic or content that you can do for long term or with someone that mm -hmm. makes you constantly curious. And so I would say number one is really just doing more self-assessment on yourself, doing that self-assessment to figure out what's, what's not, what's out there that you're not hearing that you would love to do, or what's out there that you're listening to that you think you can bring a different perspective to. And so I think that's kind of where we started. We were both, look, I've been in content creation. James hasn't really been in that space. Um, to a lesser degree, he's done it with his membership communities and things of that nature. But to a broad degree, he hasn't really done like that type of focus. He's been in different. Oh, oh. I think that's your that's your cue, uh, James. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll pick it up. <laughs> James, my, my mic really, got disconnected. James remotely disconnected. Yeah, mic. no, my mic <laughs> showed up earlier. Talk. I think I think your podcast is doing it. I don't know what's going on. Like your mine just went out. Now his is going out. Like what's going on? So yeah. I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll pick it up. So, but I think Mario, we can't hear you, Mario. Like he'll pop in in a second here. But let me let me let me pick it up. Um, but you know, you could see by virtue of the way he was answering that question, like why you know I'm so thankful to have him as a host on the podcast because, you know, Mario is like he's always on me. He's like, yo, we got to make sure we get right to the point, right out the blocks. We got to be delivering value right away, right away, right away. So it's always about you know putting the the listeners at the front because look we're all busy like i got adhd really bad i'm not going to sit there and listen to a bunch of nonsense like what is in it for me so right off the top like we get right into it and delivering value and key takeaways for people that's super super important uh for for us and you know i will say like you know one of the reasons we also connected is because you know we're different but we're also very authentic mm -hmm. and when you show up as yourself right if you have a a really important value proposition. Like, what is your why? You know, at the top, Mario talked about his why. A common thread through everything that I do is helping parents who are entrepreneurs. So that's really important to me. And like he said, it's highly differentiated. There's nothing else out, mostly nothing else out there like that. Yeah. And the two of us coming together with these different, unique perspectives, I think makes for a really great, um, a great show. Yeah. yeah so, I, so I think like in summary, know who you are. Two, make sure that it's something that you can do consistently. Three, does it connect to a stronger theme within uh, your business and your marketing and your personal brand? So Parentpreneur Foundation is what James founded. It's spot on brand for him. Absolutely. Parents making profits isn't necessarily spot on brand for me, but it is in that I'm talking to entrepreneurs that I want to never settle. And your and parent so, yourself. And I'm, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a fit from that perspective, but that's not I don't actively seek out parents. You yeah, were right. you're actively seeking out parents. I'm yeah. actively seeking out creators and entrepreneurs, yeah. many of Most, whom are parents, by the way. And well, yeah, not for my, not for, right here. 
This, this hey, dude. Right yes. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to- baby. Welcome How- to no sleep gang, baby. Oh man, you yeah. Fuzzy was brought me like more coffee. Like that's the second <laughs> one. Um, I'm curious, like how long was it from ideation to actually first episode out? Right, a lot of fric- a lot of people find friction into that. Like a little bit of background for us. Like we published, we tried to publish our first uh, our first show called Bruce and Bros. Uh, thank God that didn't happen because we were drinking beer in every episode. Yeah, uh, we were like, Bros. <laughs> alcoholic by now. But there was like a lot of friction right in the production side, and um, there's few elements in there that didn't allow us to publish right it took us a year to then and a very big event in our business where we almost kaput we were almost game over uh to inspire us to actually push the fo- the the show forward right so how long for you guys since that idea we're like hey we should do this together right to execution how was that process for you guys four weeks that's awesome <laughs> i mean you, you i mean was it it was like that james i mean here the thing is the thing is, we were in other spaces where naturally the dialogue would work well. So he would jump into my clubhouse rooms mm. and, you know, we could riff and we well, I, just, I jumped in those clubhouse rooms, bro, because I felt sorry for you. It's hard as hell to try to hold. I mean, look, no, because look, you're, first of all, you're a master at it. You're a pro. But I know how hard it is to hold that space yeah. by yourself. And I was yeah. just like, let me just hop in and just give my hand sometimes, you know, cause I just know it's hard. You're like, again, you're a pro at it. You're great at it, but I know it's hard to do. So I was just like, let me hop in there and help my bro out, man. I didn't even, I didn't even realize you were trying to, you were trying to actually be nice to me and help. <laughs> That's great, man. That's what it was, man. I was just no, trying but, to help but, out a little but bit. But we would be in those spaces and, you know, whenever we would communicate on the phone or, or talk, you know, it, it was like we could easily riff. So we yeah. knew we had this ability to kind of like riff on things. Um, and then it was, a couple of things started happening where I was constantly like, I even think I said to James a few times, like, dude, you know, we should be thinking about a podcast or you yeah. should be thinking about a podcast. So like, let's and he do was a like, podcast. man, I don't have time for that. I ain't got time for no podcast. You were like, let's do a podcast. And we're like, well, how's it going to make money? Because I'm like, if it ain't making money, like, look, we're way too growing, way too sexy to be out here playing around. and not <laughs> If it ain't making money, it ain't making sense. You know what I mean? True. And so, so we actually had a couple of other places that were interested in doing some stuff with us. And that kind of jump started us getting serious about mm-hmm. wanting to put a podcast together. Some other networks had reached out, but their, their contracts were janky. Everything they were doing wasn't really like solid. And thankfully, you know, I've been from this business and I kind of can see like red flags all over yeah. some stuff. Yeah. And I was like, this isn't going to work out. We should, we should uh, uh, go a different way. And then we kind of just like let it rest. And then the next thing I know, I think James had sent a cold email to HubSpot or saw something. And then the HubSpot thing kind of like turned on. He can give a little bit of background on that. But again, cold email that went out. And within weeks, we ended up within about two weeks. I think we had to give him a it demo. Was su- it was super fast. <laughs> super no, fast. It was super fast. Demo. Yeah, I saw some article somewhere, yeah. maybe LinkedIn, about the, the HubSpot program from last year. Um and I saw, I was like, Mario, this is interesting. We should reach out. And I sent an email to somebody on the article. They didn't get back. And then I saw the CMO's name in the article. I was like, yo, like, why am I even emailing this person? Because we have this rule we talk about in the podcast. Like, we have a no minion rule. Like, we, <laughs> like, we only talk to the bosses, man, because the, the minions will waste your time. We go right to the top. We don't mm-hmm. waste time with people who can't make decisions. So we, um, I sent an email to the CMO, a cold email to the chief marketing officer of HubSpot, right? He didn't get back at first, which is normal. I sent yeah. a follow-up email. We talk about this in the episode. And when I sent the follow-up email, if you do that, like, try to send an update. Don't just be like, hey, did you see my email or not? Nah? That's <laughs> never good. <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. It's got to be an update. It's got to be something new that's in it yeah. for them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we sent a little follow-up note thingy. And he got back and he copied the people who were over the program, who copied somebody else who was under them, who mm. copied someone under them. And then, bam, and we, had, we, we already had a pilot episode done because we look, we were like, look, we're going to do this. We're going to need to have something in the can yeah, because people are going to want to hear something. So we had one recorded. It wasn't edited. And then yep. and they got back to us on like a Friday. They were like, yeah, you know, we need something. Send us a clip. So we sent a clip. They're like, this is great. It's Friday. Like, and they were like, send us a whole episode and we're going to listen to it this weekend and make a decision by Monday. Right? Yeah. Mar- okay. Mario was like, holy crap. Mario. Take action. <laughs> Mario edited that thing down, man. I Put swear some you. music on it. Yo, it was Friday. We didn't even have a name of the now, podcast. Right. He was like, he was just like, have a name. go to the podcast. <laughs> so that was, right? And then oh, so, so good. yo, but Sunday night at 11 o'clock, we got an email from them. We're like, yo, this is amazing. 
We love you guys. We want you in the program. So we literally yes. swooped in at the 11th hour because of a cold email to the CMO of HubSpot. So and got into this. Didn't even have a name. Dude, I, I love you, guys. you guys went to like random name generator.com and then I posted it. <laughs> I, mean, I literally was like, Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Dude, Good that's God, awesome. Yeah. Th this is a great story. First, is the second time that you guys have brought up the, the cold email. So, James, in just a little bit, we're going to have to, you know, share some tips in here because, you know, like you mentioned, just outreach, cold email, just trying to get in contact with the right people can present you with so many opportunities, whether that is, you know, sales, partnerships, whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? And I find it extremely exciting, I guess, your story, because the way we connected with hospital was, in a way, a little bit similar. Oh, right? tell us. What we actually <laughs> send, we, we love sending cold videos, right? Just like. Oh, that's Mario's videos. jam right there, baby. Yeah. We're like, like, hey. <laughs> or, 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 or plays like, hey, I'm Luis, and this is my brother, Luis. And they're like, wait, two brothers. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So that, that immediately causes an impression. But then we actually had a pri applied previously. We didn't hear anything. And then we just kept, you know, we looked, okay, who's in charge of the program? No minions rule. We didn't have a name. Hey, so now we're going to. Minions now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, out. <laughs> boy, we're going to attribute it every single time we use it. But, you know, we started, okay, who is in charge of this program, right? And we noticed that Steph was part of, you know, one mm -hmm. of the, the, the big bosses in there in the program, running the program. Mm -hmm. So. We started reaching out to her. We discovered who was the, one of the main producers. We sent them a message as well. We pretty much hit everybody, but our strategy was, you know, and this is kind of like why we build content is profit on the platform is to build stronger relationships. Like less, the value of your net worth is determined by the value of your network, right? And for us, it was like, dude, we want to have cool people to connect with them and then explore if there's any other opportunities. So we actually invited three of them to our podcast the same week the same week so we had one on monday one on wednesday and one on friday <laughs> so and good. the last one that came in he was like oh guys by the way congrats on getting in the program and we wait, were like wait, 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 wait what like, like what program what are we talking yeah. about now say what now so, don't say anything i don't think i was supposed to say anything yeah. i was like well <laughs> you're like dude right now. we haven't even started the episode and now we're like all hyped up right yes that's um, so good man but night, you guys shot your shot though right yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the thing Mario and I talk about all the time. Like people, li everybody out there listening, you have got to shoot yes. your shot. And so there's two things I've noticed over the years. Some people won't shoot their shot because they're too scared. So it, need it needs a shift in mindset. And the other reason is because they simply don't know how. So Mario and I actually, we talked about this in one of our episodes, Mario, about how to get in the right frame of mind. Here's some things that you can do, some tips, some tactics to do to shoot your shot, but you got to shoot your shot. And so kudos to you guys for doing that. That's amazing. I do you too. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's, it's that gut feeling, right? Like how, how much is this, how much gut feeling is what you guys have implemented in your professional lives, whether that's on startups, whether that's on the podcast, right? Like, do you, do you feel there's an element of that? Cause personally, I don't know Fonzie, but for me, there's a lot that goes into the gut feeling. It's like that little voice that tells you, Hey, you guys got to do this. When we launched contents profit, it was in the middle of the pandemic. We lost 80% of our sales. We're like, I think this is the thing that we got to do, right? And, and there was no clear path and we just did, right? So how much of that, right, uh, have you guys utilized to to move your project forward? Not just the show, but everything, right? Like with, with your production and the content or with your startups? I'm going through it right now. We got $20,000 that we're doing on an ad spend for our other business, which is selling a course, teaching content creators and entrepreneurs how to get brand sponsorship money. And we've allocated 20 to 25,000 on marketing. We spent 3,000 so far in a budget. We've gotten about 300 uh, and some leads from that. And from those leads, I'm looking at them and I'm not happy with what I'm seeing in terms of the quality of the leads that we're yeah. getting. So right now we're going off of, okay, we got some facts. We have some data that's coming to us, but a lot of what I'm looking at in the DMS, I'm looking at who's following these ads. I'm replying to people on the ads in the comments. I'm not just like throwing an ad out there and not, not being visible. I'm actually in it talking mm -hmm. to people and I'm starting to look at their profiles and really dig deeper than what an ad can tell me. And I'm realizing like, yeah, a lot of these people are not like the exact people. So then what do I do? I got to operate off the gut. I'm operating off of instinct. Well, what are we going to do next, Mario? I don't know. But if we ain't going to continue to spend this money and do this, I know that much. We're going to stop that bleeding and try to figure out how we're going to readjust. So I would say for me, it's about 80% instinct and gut and about 20% reliance on data. Data to me, 
really just kind of makes you understand more about what you probably already know in your gut. Mm. And so, so you when you have the data that matches the gut, then you're really in your sweet spot. Like if you're feeling a certain way and the data is telling you that's pro that's the way to go, good. then you know you're like really golden. But waiting on the data to tell you what your gut should be thinking, that I don't, I don't, I don't like, and I don't think people respect enough of their intuition and their mm -hmm. internal wisdom to give them a little bit of guidance. Everyone's looking that's for good. answers from something else and most of the time the answer is within ourselves oh that's zen right there so mario yeah. so so what happens because i'm assuming this happens every once in a while when the data is contrary to your gut then what do you do when the data is contrary to your gut then yeah. you're you're then you have to have a serious question about where that gut is coming from Mm. And I, th this is a really good point you bring up because is your I mean, gut that's what being I do. Driven... I bring up good points, baby. That's what I do. <laughs> is your gut being driven by ego? Mm -hmm. See, if you're if you're okay with being wrong, you'll be fine. You'll yeah. recognize that the data is telling you something that you didn't see. But you got to be willing to be wrong, and you got to be willing to be open. If you are closed minded or if you only see certain, certain things a certain way or if you're allowing your pride or your ego to kind of dictate your moves, then yeah. you can't see yeah. it and you won't find out until the pain is too deep. And then once the pain hits you, then you're willing to listen or make an adjustment. And that by that time, you've already gone through a lot of suffering. So I think it's through meditation, through having clarity and through understanding that not one person knows all the answers. And I think when you can have that kind of openness, you allow other inputs to come in and come through that filter. But if you, are, if you don't have that filter, if your filter is not clean, yeah. then your ego's all in the way, man, you need to, you know, you got to change the filters in your house at least twice a year. So you need to at least be changing your damn ego filter. Get that thing out of there <laughs> like at least once a month. Yeah. So, <laughs> so how, how does that, you know, into, I feel like a lot of this intuition has been, you know, forged in a way by your experience. I mean, you said you've been in this space for years, right? I mean, both of you growing businesses, starting businesses, and then in the, as a, as a creator. So I'm, I'm guessing a lot of it has to do with experience gained. How does somebody that might not have that experience rely on their God and know, you know, whether, oh, cool, I, I probably should follow this, or maybe should they just tune in into, somebody else's gut, right? Be like, okay, what is this person saying? Should I just follow uh, what they're doing? What is, what is a good plan of action in there for somebody, you know, maybe a few levels below? Go ahead, Mario. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to go first. I can if you, you want. I said James shaking his go ahead, head. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nope. Go ahead, bro. I'm, well, yeah, I'm about no, to, absolutely I'm not. I'm about to you jump in a deep end on this one. should go not ahead. be paying attention to what anybody else is doing. Mm. Right? You got to you gotta figure out. Listen, Mark Twain said the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you figure out why. So go figure out that last part. Mm. Right? Go figure out why you're here. And, you know, for me, it's totally different now than it was just a few years ago. I mean, I started, just like you guys, your business went down in the pandemic. I started the Parentpreneur Foundation in the middle of the pandemic. I just lost my, I had a job. I got fired right before uh, when COVID started, my kids weren't vaccinated. I was virtual schooling my children. My daughter has really bad ADHD. It was undiagnosed at the time. I was having a really hard time doing that and starting a foundation without any previous foundation experience. But the reason I was able to get that done, you know, I don't know if you heard the last episode that we did when we, t we talked about what investors are thinking before they write you a check. One of the people who talked there was Brad Fell. Brad is Fell is OG venture capitalist, uh, founder of, co-founder of Techstars, Super great human, really rich, very successful. Um, but we, we were talking about for him, what he what he cares about is he doesn't want to know what you're passionate about. He wants to know what your purpose is. Like, what are you obsessed about? And he's going to invest in people who are obsessed. And the reason he's doing that is because, you know, when you start something new, things get hard. Right. And we talked about this, Mario, in the last episode. Sometimes, you know, you put the dog food down. That's your idea in front of the dog and the dog won't eat the food. Right. So if the dog doesn't eat the food, you either got to go make some new dog food <laughs> or you got to go find a different dog <laughs> to serve it to. Right. Yeah. If your but product if you is dog food and nobody and the no, dogs aren't eating it, <laughs> you got a problem. But if you don't have that internal, internal compass, 
that internal fire. Like Mario said it when he talked before. That's why I was passing to you to start, Mario. But meditation is a good way. Like for me, I just wake up every morning and go to bed. Like, all right, God, tell me what to do today and send me some people to help get it done. And for me, what that looks like is, you know, I go ride my bike regularly, keep, clear my head, keep my thinking clean. Mm. I get inspired. And when I get that little unction, that little that inspiration, I'm like, all right, bam, that's my answer. And I just go do that. And I don't hesitate. I don't look back. Mm. I don't think twice. And those things work out great for me. That's just mm. me. It's good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, you know, you mentioned something that I want to make sure that people also don't get confused by it because it's easy when you start doing that when you do the comparison in the social comparison game and you're like okay but you're but mario your starting line is different than my starting line like oh child, you know, please. you've been doing this excuses yeah so here's the thing right i didn't know anything of what i was doing when i was doing it here's the thing i just told you i'm a, i have allocated 20 to twenty five thousand dollars in an ad spend for this other revenue generating product of ours and I have not done ads. I don't know that space. Mm. I don't know what I'm doing. I know what I'm listening. I'm know what I'm looking at. I know yep. the team I'm relying on. But I mean, full transparency, I'm looking at the team and I'm like, you guys aren't really doing a good job of convincing me. So I think we're going to put everything on pause right now oh. because we need to reassess everything. And that's not mm. being an, an idiot or being mean. I'm a really, really nice guy. I mean it. I really am a nice guy. But you got to spend that money wisely. So. <laughs> of course I'm going to say I'm a nice guy, right? But, but, nice but, guy. but at the end yeah. of the day, yeah. it's our business is money that we have to spend as wisely as possible. Mm -hmm. And so I want to make sure that people aren't assumption of, well, you figured certain things out. Yes. After not knowing anything, we figured certain things out. This will yeah. be a new one that I'm figuring out yeah. in real time with you right now. Next week, I'll have a different answer for you than I have right now. So my point is you have to just go. The idea that we need to wait for something to be perfect does not exist. We all are fine knowing that as humans, we're flawed. And we all can can I could I have no problem asking a room full of people. Do you feel like there's something that you could work on within yourself to be better? Absolutely. Whole stadium. There might be one Kanye in the building. It's like, nah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a God. I'm a God. It's, it's done. Yeah, I am perfect. Um, but other than that, it's like everybody's hands go up. Right. So if we know that we need to be worked on ourselves, why don't we hold our products and our ideas to the same accountability? We we almost feel like we can't release something unless it's perfect. But yet we know we're not perfect and we can yeah. work on ourselves. Yeah. So the point of all of that is to say you have to go with what you know at that time. There is no room for waiting. There is no room for regret. Regret happens if you don't go mm. or regret happens if you wait it too long to go. And so if you know that you want to get, for example, in the podcast space, make a damn demo. Stop yep. talking about making it. Stop telling me what equipment you're going to go buy and all this other stuff. You're waiting for the right pop filter. And you got to wait for you have the right money for the microphone. Forget. All, can you just get with your people Let's and go. actually record yeah. something so somebody can hear something? Yep, absolutely. I think that the best actionable advice right there is just go do it, right? I mean, we were talking about shoe dog, Phil Knight right there. Just do it, right? At the end of the day. Um, the, I think what you just explained also reflects a lot of the creative process, right? A lot of people, when they want to create content of some sort, and we ju you just use the podcast as an example, they just get stuck in oh what am i gonna say how am i gonna say it how am i gonna create it right and they make it this massive thing that it becomes overwhelming and i i know this because that was me 100 you know ultra perfectionist <laughs> yeah. guys i would be, be so frustrated because like my, my gut feeling like i follow it right it's like okay we'll do this and fancy has called me out many ways because there's like bro you've executed on like 10 steps and you like we did not talk about this and i'm like okay Maybe I need to slow down maybe a little bit. What's the compromise for us as partners, as business mm -hmm. partners, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a, a whole different conversation. But also there was a stage where Fonsi just consumed content 24-7. And it was very frustrating to me as it was very frustrating to him that I was just going out and executing. Right. Right? So we it took a bunch of conversations to find that balance. I'm like, okay, what is the commitment, right? And I think that's something that's very important too on, on doing this. So I don't yeah. know. I mean, for reference, the first podcast, Bruce and Bros, that we tried to do, we had three different cameras, 
DSLRs that you know that they have like a 20 minute limit. So <laughs> most of them, right. so we will be recording and halfway through the recording. It's like, okay, you keep talking. I got to go and turn it on again. <laughs> right. Like, if, and then we had different audio, audio inputs, the audio yep. going through the cameras. So imagine the editing process of that thing. Yeah. Right? Brutal. So yeah. That's brutal. Brutal. And we were recording all that in a two bedroom apartment in my bedroom. We call that, it, we call it porn. We set. call it porn. So when my girlfriend would come in, she'll be like, what are you guys doing? I'm like, it's a podcast. baby. Ah, this is great. It's a podcast. Brutal. And you know, we recorded five episodes and guess how many of those five we actually post produced. <laughs> zero. What, None. Zero? Not even one. Yeah, not even one. Because as soon as I sat and I had all those files in front of me, I was like, eh, this is uh, a yeah, lot. Doing it. You yeah, know, right. <laughs> When we started content is profit, the first thing we said is like, how do we make this thing, this thing frictionless? So we just go and do it. Guess what? We had a phone, we had live Facebook, That's and it. we had ourselves, right? So we just started talking. And then eventually after episode 20, we're like, cool, what else are we gonna say? What about we bring some cool people into the podcast, mm -hmm. right? And now mm -hmm. we are on episode 282, actually Damn. it's like we're on something published. Um, but is because of that we remove the friction and then yeah. it evolves after time now there's more steps we do a little bit more but we have more of the capacity and the resources yeah. to do so and it all started because we just decided mm -hmm. to take that first step and i i think it's it's pretty valuable right it it's so simple we we've mentioned it before it is simple but it's not easy right and the consistency part of it is a challenge because people can yep. start it and then a week later, they're like, okay, cool. It didn't work, right? I didn't see the results that I wanted. So what would you share? What would you tell with, uh, tell about that consistency, right? How, how do you, I'm guessing it goes hand in hand with Mark Twain and finding your why, finding your purpose, right? To stay consistent. But what have you find throughout your journey together, right? To stay consistent in the things that you, you guys are doing. Uh, you know, it's, um, you know, like, I mean, because, this content is kind of natural for us. You know, look, we don't, you know, we're probably, we're not super organized when it comes to what we're going to talk about. We're like, what are we going to talk about this week, Mario? Like, but I was last time I was like, all right, I got some ideas. We're going to put some stuff up in the mural board and let's just have like a bunch of topics that we want to do coming up. But it's just, I feel like anytime we get on the phone and start talking about whatever, it's like a podcast episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, we start talking and be like, all right, all right, save that, save that, save that. Because that's that's just how we that's just how we roll. Yeah. So, yeah, for for us, it's kind of for us. I guess it's a little bit. It's it is a little natural, but it's natural because we know, like you said, we know the lane that we're in, yeah. and we and we're mm -hmm. constantly already looking for stories, and we're paying attention to things in our communities, and, and you're so executing we're, right on a day in day out. Right, plus we're doing it right. Yeah, getting... and and we're actually doing it. We're not like podcasters yeah, talking about it. We're actually like yeah. living these businesses and living these things that we're building. Mm -hmm. And so, not only are we active practitioners, we're also curators. And yeah. I think that that kind of really helps. But I do want structure because I just know, like for right now, and and he's hearing this for the first time. This is how transparent we get. Like it's it's about to hit fatigue for me to come up with with topics because this is why I like recording in batches. And no, you I, know, agree. I, I agree. I, I like, you, bro. I like leaving some time and, but life has happened on both yeah. ends. Most totally. on my end, that's really not enabled us to yeah, record you did in did your some TEDx batches. talk. Right. So you were, you were busy with Ted, your TEDx talk. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I was but, out of pocket and for, yeah. for a couple of different things. And so, so, but the fact that we can share a Google doc, the fact that we can quickly communicate like, Hey, what about these ideas? What do we think? Yeah. Yeah. And then we can kind of like hit back. Hey, I saw this stat or, Hey, take a look at this article. Tell me what you think. Maybe this is something yeah. we can riff off of. And then we also try to look for that frictionless piece too. Is there a guest that we could bring on that would help with this? Or are there people in our communities where we could send out a video ask? We use the video ask platform to send out requests um, from our community to get their voices onto the podcast. So we'll put out mm -hmm. a question be like, Hey, what are you struggling with right now? And then we'll get some answers from that. And that will give us content from our audience that we can now yep. put to the podcast that we can actually react to, which ends up being great content. Now we have to think about, we can't just be like jibber jab. We got to have takeaways. We have to have structure, but this yeah, is one yeah. of the reasons why our next move is to get a producer. 
um, I love to it. be on the show because it, with the show, because then we'll have a little bit more structure and someone focused on coming to us yeah. with pitch ideas and statistics and great guests and things of that yeah. nature. I, I, bet you, I bet you a quarter that producer is not going to be as good as us is coming out with ideas. Well, you yeah. know, if you if you start from that point, James. I'm just saying. I'm just saying we're let's dope. Let them what prove, we do, let's let man. them prove themselves. Let's see. Let's I'm see. just saying we're dope at it. That's all I'm saying. We're, hey, we're that, it, it, it's always challenged to hand certain things off. That is for sure. Uh, when we first got our, our first video editor, we were, I was like so reluctant because I was doing all the editing, but it got to the point where I was burned out. I was like, man, I cannot take on because I was not just doing our content, but I was doing our clients content too. Oh so yeah, I was that's like, a lot. Dude, I cannot yeah. keep doing this. But then when I, when it was time to hand it out, I was like, I don't really want to hand it out either because I don't know how <laughs> if they're going to do it that good, right? But it's part of the process. And you got to, totally. it, it's an investment. It's, it's not just going to be money, but it's going to be part of your time teaching them and you know sharing what's in your head so they can produce it the right way and i, I know my brother has something to say here and we're close on time but i just want to make a quick uh remark kind of tie a few ideas that i've had in my head actually since we started talking you know i just saw a, a video of this this guy he was the first youtube liaison i think it's called the youtube creator liaison something like that and you know, he talked to hundreds of creators and he noticed that the average lifespan of a creator is between five and seven years. Right. And I found that very interesting because, you know, today we've talked about consistency creating, right? Like uh, that the purpose. And I saw another video a long time ago that the guy was saying, hey, when it everything changed for me is when I was creating from an intrinsic place. Right. Mm -hmm. What is the content that I want to create? Like, what excites me? What is that thing that I want to share with the world, regardless of what people are telling me on the outside? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think I feel like if we match those two, wh why mm -hmm. is it lifespan of, of creators five to seven years? I think it's because a lot of them are just created extrinsically, right? Like, oh, cool. Like, how can I create to appeal to a certain crowd or group of people? When instead is, how do I create something that I'm going to love, that I'm going to be inspired for, that is going to attract the people, that is just going to keep feeding me that motivation to keep creating, right? So I just wanted to put those, those points in there because I see that in you guys. I see the two of you enjoying the process. I mean... Mario has been a creator for he 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 you know kicked that five to seven year stat to the yeah, curb. Yep. But but I find that amazing and I I can tell right. I mean from the, your podcast and now from having our conversation together that you guys are freaking enjoying this process right. Like the banter between the two of you, all these things you're creating intrinsically, and I think you guys are bringing an aspect of community as well to it, which is absolutely amazing. Guys, we have a we have a hashtag on the show called uh, choke the mic. So Fonsi just choked the mic. I've been like putting it here and here like 10 minutes ago. We should wrap up the show. I'm just saying. Uh, just to wrap up, right? Like uh, as we end the show, this has been so fun and so entertaining, right? We could potentially mm -hmm. do that 24-hour marathon that we talked uh, offline. Hey, we're, but we're, we're going to leave it on the table right there, you know? <laughs> we talked about containers, right? On like what to do, what to say. Like how do you like actually plan all these things? But the last question of the show, probably our favorite one. Sorry, like where will you be if you did not publish? He'll be sitting right there doing what he does all the time. I've seen him too many times in that spot right there doing his thing. But where would I be if I didn't publish? If I, uh -huh. if you if did I didn't publish. publish. The podcast, you mean? Just uh, like creating in, 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 throughout his life, you know? In oh. General, yeah. oh. Yeah. What if you wouldn't get a mic, you know, start sp public speaking? I'd be, and no disrespect, but. I'd be working in some nine to five, hating my damn life, pissed off, living for the weekends. Just put mm -hmm. me in a casket already. Damn. <laughs> if you I didn't hit publish, the, the inside of me would be, would be, if you're being straight up honest, right? Like the inside mm -hmm. would be in such turmoil that I didn't figure it out, that I didn't do it. And there would be so much regret that it would start to manifest in other negative energy. And so, and then I would always have something to blame. I would always have somebody else's was the problem or the reason why I wasn't able to ever pop or do my thing was for, cause for some other reason, it would always be something else. Yeah. And so really what it would be, it would be, it would be a lot of suffering. Mm. Yeah. That's powerful. Thank what what about you, James? Well, it's a little different for me because as Mario said earlier, like this is new. 
for me. So like I have my, my foundation and I have a new startup that I'm launching, which, you know, just, we got some amazing news coming down the pike about that. Um, I would be doing that stuff. You know, I'll be writing another book and we're building my community, yeah. but you know, I'm, I'm thankful to be doing this creator work. And, and, you know, we were intentional about making sure we did it in a way where it made sense. Like we were, you know, the days of build it and they will come. Those days are gone. Like we don't have time. He's too busy. I'm too busy. We too grown and sexy for that. We ain't got time for that. <laughs> we're just, nah. uh, I really <laughs> yeah, just nah. think that ultimately that's a great question because that's the one that can really kick people into action. And, you know, the thing is like when you aren't doing what you feel you should be doing, there is friction. You can try to avoid it. You can try to deny it. You can try to act like it's not there, but you know damn well what mm -hmm. would really be driving you. But you're afraid, oh man, I got these bills. I got this quality of life or I got these obligations. I got to stop telling me those things. Tell me how we're going to try to get to what, what if you did something on the part-time side? What if you did a project? What if you yeah, meant, yeah. what if you found a mentor? What if, you know what I mean? Like there's so yeah. many answers now um to that it's really all within you so the question really comes down to well how much suffering are you willing to do Damn. are you willing to suffer until you make the change or are you willing to try to like you know go do go do it and and try to defeat the suffering that's that you're in so yeah somebody's uh i think their video is frozen there oh they just hopped out so it's Oh, and I can't hear your your audio is out. I, I just muted myself. Oh, I just muted go. myself. All right, so it's, it's, we're running the Biz Bros. So we're podcast running the Biz today. Bros. podcast. This is us, so yo, I'm Louis. I'm Luis. Picking that, this and, up, and I'm Luis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Luis, and, and he's Luis. <laughs> I'm Luis and Luis right now, over there, right there. Yeah, let, me so try my, let me try my accent. Let me see if I can get my um, let me see if I can get my accent going. It's I don't know. Really... <laughs> I speak a little Spanish, but I don't know. You speak a little Spanish, a little yeah, bit. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luis, so good. Oh, you see us taking over the show? So you took over the show. Did you see that? Well, I love it. Yeah, yeah. We 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 can still see you guys and hear you. You guys absolutely crush it. <laughs> I really was looking to do my intro. I wanted to be like dancing and whatnot, but I'm Luis, <laughs> and I'm Luis Dude. right there. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. We 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 know you guys are part of the the crew and the family, uh, because you guys just took over this thing, man. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I love guys, it. Guys, with love that it. said, thank you so much for tuning to the Contest Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite platforms and on social media at Biz Rosco. That is right. And if James and Mario here help you move one step closer towards your goal, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys. Peace. Let's go. But, wow, right at the end, this thing crashed right at the last second. Hilarious. Uh, it always goes that way. Yo, I always. was having a lot of problems with my mic. Um, mm -hmm. I looked down at one point and it was no longer from my Shure mic. It was from the MacBook. So the audio might sound like crap. It didn't sound it like over that to then, me. Then the volume yeah. was going down. So I don't know, just a heads up. It was doing some it, really it didn't weird sound stuff. Like your, it didn't sound like your audio ever changed. Yeah, okay. it, it actually sounds good throughout the, the whole episode. I think is the. Okay. Um, I think we might be having problems either with the dongle on the computer uh, where we just plug everything or maybe stream yard. We, 